Joe, what's wrong? They don't care, Laura. Nobody cares. They're just gonna keep making them anyway. Today I'm going to be discussing a video that was pointed out to me by a viewer. It's MatPat's Game Lab, The Science of Sword Fighting. For those of you who aren't familiar with Matt's work, he runs the channel Game Theory. The channel's basically focused on looking at the science behind video games and comparing it to real world science. Things like working out how fast Sonic really is, if a person could actually survive the leap of faith from Assassin's Creed, and if a person could actually live on Rapture, the city in the sky from Bioshock Infinite. In these videos, Matt is renowned for the depth of research he will go to to truly understand any particular subject. So obviously, when I found out he was talking about sword fighting, I was extremely interested. You guys know how I feel about those shiny, pointy, metal, stabby things. So I quickly spent the £2 entry fee and rushed over to watch the video as quickly as I could. After all, there is no way they could fuck this up. Right? Right? Two whole pounds, Laura. Do you know what I could have bought for two whole pounds? What? Could have bought two things worth one pound or... 200 things worth a penny. Now, as I've already stated, often there's no limit to how much research Matt will do in order to truly understand any particular subject. So, when it came to understanding the science of sword fighting, what was he gonna do? Would he peer tirelessly through the hundreds of different historical manuals and treaties? Nope. Perhaps he would find and speak to a local historian? Nope. How about Googling? He'd at least do a Google search, right? Nope. Maybe he'd check out the HEMA documentary, Back to the Source, which you can watch for free on YouTube. Nope. He could probably even try getting in contact with someone from that same documentary. Someone like Anders Linnard, Samantha Swords, Dave Rawlings, Axel Peterson, or Matt Easton. These are all people who I've reached out to personally and they were extremely helpful when I was getting started out in historical swordsmanship. So I'm pretty sure they would have helped point Matt in the right direction. Well, let me tell you, the game theorist didn't do any of that. Instead, he hired Brian Danner a stunt coordinator. Now, I only did a Google search on this guy, which is more than Matt did, but his main credentials seem to be that he trained Natalie Portman to use a sword for the film Your Highness. I can't deny the man's lucky. I mean, we'd all like to show Natalie Portman our sword skills. I can't believe I just made that joke. Jesus Christ, somebody kill me. But is this really enough to make the man an expert? Nope. I mean, if you look over his resume, you pretty much only see commercials, music videos, film, television. It's kind of weird that this self-proclaimed swordmaster wouldn't want to prove his understanding of the techniques in any kind of tournament environment. But to be fair, just because the guy isn't a big name in HEMA doesn't mean that he won't understand a thing or two. I mean, we can all see he clearly knows his stuff. All right, separate, separate. Come on in, guys. Thank goodness Brian Danner was there to break those guys up. If he wasn't, they would have probably just kept pushing their shields into each other. And we all know how dangerous that can be. Kevin and Adam here, these are my fighters. They're gonna keep you guys safe today. These two are credited as sword experts, but after doing a little research, it turns out that in this video, sword expert must just mean stunt coordinator or stunt actor. The two terms are interchangeable. One, two, three, on guard! Why? Remind me again why they're yelling on guard? Without even looking at you, I can tell that it is terrible. Let's try it again. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was great. Guys, was it great? So good. So good. <laughs> I got, I got, we, got, we got an okay with an iffy. Whoa, oh dear. The two sword experts really don't think much of your footwork. Better try harder. All right, guys, so we're gonna introduce you to the hand and a half broadsword. Well, this is a big surprise. Brian Danner, the self-proclaimed sword master, doesn't even know the correct terminology for the sword he's holding. Hand and a half broadsword. A hand and a half broadsword doesn't exist. Hand and a half broadsword. Hand and a half sword, bastard sword, and longsword are all interchangeable terms for a longsword. Although, a hand-and-a-half sword can sometimes have a shorter grip. 
so that's all okay. Broadsword, however, is an entirely recent term unused by any medieval or renaissance fencing masters. It's often used to refer to Scottish basket hilt swords. Doesn't quite look like what Brian's holding there, does it? Sometimes affectionately referred to as the bastard sword. Sometimes affectionately referred to as bastard sword. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Just look at Matt's face. You can tell he's thinking, how much are we paying this guy again? Point it up, rotate it like the hand of a clock, roll it, open up that left hand and protect that leg. I feel like I can't resist that sword strike all that well in this position. It the reason you feel like you can't stop an oncoming attack in that position, Matt, is because you can't. It may be less to do with the sword and more to do with you, Matt, Pat. Oh, no, I... This is one of the most awkward parries. Okay. But you've got to think your elbow lines up, your shoulder lines up, your torso is there. Standing there and like, this is weird. My hands don't normally do this. Yeah. But all you need is to be able to stop that from hitting you. Is to be able to stop that from hitting you. 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 On a real cut to that body. Uh... I'm past him, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't put that parry up, he's done. He's done. Yeah, huh. he's done. But I like him. I want to keep him where he is. Oh yeah, that was a real cut. Except I'm pretty sure that if the other guy hadn't raised his sword, it would have just went straight past him. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But Brian Danner thinks he would have sliced right through you. You are so lucky that Brian Danner wants to keep you where you are. But I like him, I wanna keep him where he is, yeah. Uh, I think you guys should probably take a look at the armor. Yeah, we'll take cool. a look at it. That sounds great, let's, let's take a look. look. I don't know much about the authenticity of armor, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and guess that this isn't what Vikings really looked like. I'm also gonna assume that knights didn't actually wear fabric scarves with chainmail patterns printed on them. That really wouldn't have done much to protect their necks. It goes on like this for a while. The gamers look impressed. Brian Danner spins. They play this weird capture the flag challenge where all they seemingly have to do is attack their opponent's sword a few times, then move on to the next guy. Truly awe-inspiring stuff. Ready? Okay, here we go. Ah, for honor! How much do you think Ubisoft paid Matt to yell for honor as he ran into battle? For honor! Hashtag not spawn. Oh, he yells it twice, but not because of sponsorship. You can tell because he yells hashtag not spawn. So, must be true. I mean, he said it, so it must be true, right? Come on! I know I make a lot of comments about bad swordsmanship in films and TV shows, but the, the sword play on display here is truly, truly atrocious. Oh, I'm pretty sure I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Yeah. Do you look at sword fighting any differently now having gone through this experience? Everyone else had a different style, a different way to handle themselves. I can now look at somebody sword fighting in a movie and really be like, oh wow, bam, bam, like they're doing the moves. Sure. And that's like a yeah. really cool thing that I probably didn't really think about before. My idea of knights fighting on the battlefield, you're up against a guy you've never fought before. And so his tells are different than your training partners. Yeah. And it's such mm -hmm. like a slightly different experience, mm -hmm. but your fundamentals are still there. And if you just trust yourself, yeah. hopefully things will work out. Yeah. I like how they're talking like hardened warriors who understand the depth and complexity of swordsmanship after two hours with a stunt coordinator. Sorry, sorry, swordmaster, Brian Danner. They must be naturals because I've been training for over a year now and I still suck. Now I get that this video is just a bit of fun promotion for an upcoming video game. Promotion that you have to pay for, but it's just a bit of fun. But I don't understand why they had to call it the science of sword fighting. After all, you watch a video like that, you're expecting at least at some point for them to talk about real world swordsmanship. Not just play some weird capture the flag game that's orchestrated by a stunt coordinator. I really was expecting a lot more from the guy who calculates this crazy stuff from video games. I was expecting him to do at least a little bit more research. I was hugely let down by this video. My guess is that Ubisoft hired MatPat to make stuff like this look realistic so that it would make stuff like this look realistic. But that's just a theory. A sword theory.
What do you guys think of my Witcher hairstyle? Yeah? I don't think Geralt plays with his hair like this. Hi, I'm Geralt. I slay monsters. Yeah. 